Hey everybody, um, so I'm working on some new uh, laser designs and um, I, uh, um, I I want to do like a, a modular system like uh, you if you watch I don't know like my last video or there was the one before that um, I made some some dungeon tiles out of this system like using um, some molds so this is based on an inch system. And then it's going to be compatible with um, her starts, her starts molds. Actually, I talked to Bruce, and then I asked him. I was like, "Hey, if I sold these things, you know, would could I get your blessing to like use your, your molds and stuff, like, and show pictures of your stuff with like the marketing materials and stuff?" And he's like, "Oh yeah, absolutely. Just say you know, her starts compatible." Um, but uh, so this this is a. A system that you could you could do fantasy you could do sci-fi um but um i'm working on sci-fi designs right now because the laser stuff is it's much easier to flat pack you know um laser stuff and ship it than and like the molds and all that so maybe somewhere down the line so i am thinking about selling these um i i want to i want to know um let me know in the comments, like, what you guys think of this stuff, because I'm thinking about, like, reactivating my Amazon store or something and selling this stuff through my Amazon store. Part of the reason why I'm doing it is because nobody's got a system like this that, that this is what I want. Um, so I'll explain a little bit about how, it's, how it works. You, you have, if you want to just do wall, wall tiles, or sorry, wall sections, Right, it this this will be like a good uh, a good system to just plop down walls, and then um, if you want to do floor tiles and then have just like doors, you know, in between them where something like slides open, then you could use it that way too, um, and then have your you know your floor tiles and then have like doors where you slide the thing out, like um, like a space hole. You know, if you've seen what, if you know what Space Hulk looks like, the, the board game. And then, um, but it will also work if you want to do 3D stuff. Um, and, you know, um, build, have your, have your, like, your room tiles. And then you want to key that into something else. And then you have your walls. So, like, the, the rooms and the walls, or just the rooms, like, the floor tiles, or... It would even work as a 3D system where you could build levels out of, out of things. So I'm working on something like some little connection pieces that things can slot in on top of each other and, you know, like slot in next to each other. And it all just kind of taps together with like a pretty, a pretty simple um, design. But like, you know, you can build like 3D stuff out of it. So, you know, there's different types of people. There's people that like full walls, half walls, like, you know, implied walls, like floor tiles, and this should work for everybody. Um, but anyways, so I will show you how this stuff glues together and then give, give it a quick and dirty paint job. I, I'm going for like a sort of, I don't know, like dirty uh, industrial look. Um, and then uh, let me know in the comments what you if you guys like this system, and hopefully soon I'm gonna have one for sale somewhere. If you want to get some, um, I have a whole bunch of these long skinny pieces of MDF. Like the guy that I buy my MDF from sends them flat pack to me, and then he sends me the cutoffs, um, like the stuff that nobody else wants, and I have a whole ton of long skinny things for making walls out of. So I'm doing a lot of experimenting with um, wall designs. But uh, but anyways, yeah, let's, uh, let's get on with it. Let's do some, some glue up and painting. Hey everybody. So I'm working on some sci-fi designs. Um, well, actually this is just like a, it's just a modular system that uh, you can do whatever you want with it. Like I made some dungeon tiles with these um still working on these designs the like these guys um they're they're having this problem where they kind of like 
buckle or they well what it is is that they have these teeth cut in these runners for so that they can tab together and then whenever they get glued up it wants to dry uh it, it uh, curves in on itself kerf kerf is the, like the technical term um is when it when it does that so like i need to <laughs> do a little bit of a redesign with these runners um but this is you know is, this is just a, a generic little tile that you can glue stuff to right uh and then i'm working on a wall system to go with these and um so yeah the way that these work right is that um they uh they they key together and then um <clears throat> once they've uh key together then you can stick like doors and walls and just whatever into the little tab ends right okay so i've got some uh pva glue in here and um i use i prefer eileen's tacky glue that's the the kind that i use um and then i uh, i take a, a paintbrush right and then put it in some some water and then uh just you know load some onto like a little palette these guys are nice because you can just pop in a dishwasher when you're done um and then uh go in with and i've got a flat and then i just go in and kind of uh, dab some on and then it goes it just sort of seeps into the cracks and the the wood this or wood product um, laser board MDF right it is a wood product it's basically just sawdust that's put together with the binder um, it will soak up that glue, so it will draw it in to the little connections, you know? And, um, and then it's water soluble, so you can just kind of take your finger or, or a paintbrush and then just clean up the, uh, the squeeze out. And in my opinion, that's like from experimenting with this stuff, that's the best way to glue these up because it actually creates a super, super strong bond. Um, there's a reason why they, you know, they call this stuff like book binders glue or wood glue um, is because it, it creates a super, super strong bond between fibrous things like wood or paper. Okay, and then, um, when you're doing stuff like this, like um, flat stuff, where like a like a wall section, um, you know, again, like this, this using a paintbrush just it uh, makes it so much easier to do these instead of like squeezing glue on and then um, I'm, I'm not really, you know, I'm not being precious with it or anything like that. I just like the, the capillary action is going to soak up, you know, it's just going to, it's just going to soak into the MDF. So, um, but when you're, when you're gluing up like flat things like this, the, the best thing for these is these little binder clips, these guys just make this so much easier. Um, like first off, like what you can do, like I'm, I'm just gonna clean up my squeeze out real quick. Um, what you can do is um, you can, you know, like you, you line them line them up, right? And then um, use the, like use this as a guide, use the little flat edge as a guide to, um, to get everything totally trued up. And, uh, you know, again, like all this stuff is just gonna, it's just gonna soak into the, uh, the MDF and make a super, super strong bond in there. Um, 
the closest thing that you can get to an MDF weld. All right, so yeah, just use these guys to true up all of your angles. from each side and then it's going to dry um, like that's that's just going to be a really really strong connection in there and it's going to keep it from warping to like uh, buckling up in, in some spots all right so these guys are I don't want to mess with this. This is not dry enough. <laughs> I was gluing this up and I ran out of my little um, diamond plate things. Um, so these guys are dry enough to go over to spray paint. Uh, kind of see how this system works. Pretty basic, very uh, Spartan, but functional. Um, so yeah, um, I'll get into more of like how, how this system is supposed to work later. Um, but what, yeah, uh, these guys are ready to go to spray paint. Um, basically, I want to, I want to make these so that they can be either like a wall system or like a wall and platform, like room tile kind of system. Um, or even like a total like 3D thing where you can build like different structures out of them and stuff. So I'm kind of like messing around with these designs. But you know, it's laser stuff, so I'm just, I just cut more. Um, all right, so yeah, I'm going to take this to spray paint. Um, and then this is actually like, I, I took the file in here, you know, in between the teeth, and then got it to that thickness, and then I stuck this emery board in here and got it so that that would like slide kind of freely in there. I think that this is actually like the perfect width for um, this uh, these these things to like slide freely. So I need to I need to measure this and then put that into the the final design. But uh, I'm gonna take this stuff off to spray paint before I do the next step. All right, uh, these guys are back from spray paint. Um, and I actually, so I, I, I mess with my design a little bit and then um, just wanted to show you guys like I cleaned up the, the, the laser and Everything just, you know, uh, slides together now. No, like you can see, there's no no filing or sandpaper or anything on these. Um, apparently, yeah, <laughs> I just needed to clean up the, uh, the connections with the laser in the design. So this is a different one, though. Like this is, um, these guys are going to be, if you have like a platform like this, then you want to stick them on. Um, and then it'll still, and, and also fix this part so this uh, slides freely. This is um, four millimeters in here and it has like the perfect clearance for these. Uh, but then those like you get stick on to the sides of one of these platforms like that. Um, and I want to do like some, some like doors and like gate designs and stuff like that too. So, but that's how this, that's how this system is going to work. And, um, I think I want to do some, uh, hairspray chipping on this stuff, uh, just to try as a paint job. <clears throat> I think I am going to change this design. I mean, I'm definitely going to change these, but these, I kind of like these, um, but I want to see how they look with the coat of paint. So first off, what I'm going to do is, um, I'm going to use some, just like a kosher salt, 
like this is just like the heavy grain kind of the you know thick stuff um, so you can see it's a little bit coarser right and it makes nice uh, rusty pits on things when you do hairspray chipping so where's my hairspray here it is Um, I like this stuff. I like to use uh, Tresemme, a uh, regular hold, I guess. And so what you do, right, is you um, you hit it um, with some spray paint. I'm sorry, sp uh, hairspray. And then you just uh, sprinkle some of this stuff on. <clears throat> and then what this does is it makes a um, it makes a layer that just like uh, dissolves later when you're when you do um, um, <clears throat> when you you know you, you do an, a, another layer of paint on top of that and then you can just sort of uh, w rub it away because this this stuff is water soluble. And like they do make, um, there's like special stuff that Vallejo makes and um, what's, what do they call, uh, yeah, MIG, like ammo and, um, you know, AK, like they all make different kinds of like chipping fluid, but hairspray works pretty well. So I, I'm kind of just a hairspray fan because it's, you know, it's ready to go in the can. Just spritz it. Okay, so uh, I want to try. Uh, um, oh, so I'm going to work with the airbrush, right? The um, the airbrush is just going to give me a lot more control over like the the um, the consistency of the paint, and like I want to thin it down and make it. Um, easy to sort of brush off of these things with just like a paintbrush. Um, I don't want to use spray paint because spray paint is just, it's like, I've never tried to do hairspray chipping, like salt chipping with spray paint, but I just like, I'm a little scared too because it's just uh, it's a little bit too much. So I'm going to thin this down and I'm using um, Model Air. Vallejo Model Air, um, but I'm going to thin it down a lot. You can see it's like a kind of like skim milk consistency, you know. It's kind of a good rule of thumb is that you you want your airbrush paint to be somewhere <clears throat> in between like whole milk and skim milk when you're airbrushing. Um, a lot of stuff that people sell is airbrush paint is like way too thick to go through the airbrush. Um, okay, so the hairspray is dry, right? You pretty much just wait, just wait until it's like dry to the touch and not super tacky anymore. Um, I want to try a different paint job. I want to try this uh, kind of this like Air Force green. Um, so. I'm using the Grex, and then the Grex kind of dumps out paint more, way more than the Infinity or the... Okay, so these are nice and bone dry. Um, <clears throat> you do not have to wait until this, you know, with this hairspray technique, like you don't have to wait until they're bone dry. You can just let it get dry to the touch and then um, scrub it off. So. Like you can see how it gets this kind of like broken texture, um, but that's like, that's totally what I'm going for, right? Uh, so like I can just, I, I can rub the, um, the, the, sea, the kosher salt off and then you get this kind of cool like chipped paint thing going on. Um, there's a few ways to do this, right? So uh, <clears throat> you can use a stiff brush like a like a crapped out toothbrush. 
um, another like I, I would recommend something like this too. So this is a this is a stipple brush, and this is going to be a lot tougher. These these uh, this this kind of brush, the bristles are just a lot stronger than your your standard like acrylic um, or uh, you know craft craft brush. So don't use your good brushes to do this. But um, what I do is I just take a little bit of water, you know, and then you uh, kind of work it in there. And then it starts to dissolve the, um, the hairspray layer. Like it gets in under this paint layer and it starts to just dissolve that hairspray layer. Um, and it's actually been like, it's been a couple of days because real life got in the way. I was gonna, I was gonna paint these and then, you know, just real life got in the way. But what this does is it, it just makes the, the paint start to, to chip away, you know? So um, this works good. And then, you know, a toothbrush works pretty good too. Um, so, you know, it can be a kind of aggressive, like a, a toothbrush. Um, you can use a brush like this too. You can use just a, you know, a regular um, craft brush, like a, your standard kind of acrylic brush, and then just sort of do it a little bit more gently, you know, and um, basically you're just gonna kind of work that paint off until you're happy with it, until it's like, like I like to do kind of like edge, the, you know, gra grab all the edges, where it looks like, um, I don't know, like, you know, if somebody's like, if this is in a hanger or something, it's like somebody brushed up against it. In fact, um, where's like the toothpick? Uh, I'll just show you like what that would, so if you have something that has like kind of like a, a little hard, uh, you know, a, a tip to it, you can go through it and do like little, um, you know, gouges in the paint and stuff, or, you know, just kind of use it like that to just chip at the paint and stuff. It does, it gets you a really like realistic kind of looking effect. Um, but it can, you know, some, some of these things, like some of it can be a little bit aggressive, especially after the, the hairspray layer just starts to dissolve, you know, um, it can be a little bit aggressive. And then if you want to do, if you want to do rust, like under this, there's a few ways to do that too. Like you can do a layer of rusty paint, you know, that's like being been chipped off. Um, that's, you know, under here, or what you can do is, um, I think, well, what I'm going to do, um, is, uh, I'm going to do the, the chipping. Like I'm going to chip off this paint until it's, where I'm happy with it. And then I'm going to do like sort of streaking rust where it's like coming down and, um, you know, it looks like it's like collecting in places because I, I know that these like the, they're always going to be like this. They're always going to be standing up like this whenever they're being used. So I want to do sort of streaking rust that's like coming down and like collecting in, um, certain spots, you know? And, uh, and I can also do, I can come back in and like sort of put some paint back on and stuff too. But, um, but I like this look, this looks cool to me, so. All right, so I'm just gonna kind of rub off a little bit more of this stuff in some spots. And then I'm gonna seal it down. I'm gonna take it outside and I'm gonna hit it with some, um, some clear coat, you know, uh, just to seal this so that this doesn't get any more, it doesn't, none of it, um, no more of it comes up when I'm, when I'm doing other stuff, like doing the rust and the kind of like streaking, uh, streaking rust, streaking grime, you know, stuff like that. So, yeah, I'm going to finish this, seal it, and then we'll come back to it. Okay, so I uh, took everything outside and then just hit it with some, some clear coat. Um, 
any, you know, like in my experience, any brand will do for like uh, terrain stuff. Um, if you, if for minis, I, I will recommend one brand because I feel like it does make a difference. Um, I, this is like my favorite um, rattle can version of, of lacquer, like a dull coat is uh, testers. Um, but for, you know, terrain stuff, like the, the cheap stuff works just fine. Um, Krylon, their brand is, it dries a little glossy, but everybody else, theirs just works just fine. Um, so I went a little bit more aggressive on one side than on the other. So you kind of see how that looks. Um, oh, got a little bit of frosting for some reason. It's kind of windy outside, and then I think that's why... It, um, it, uh, so I got a little bit of frosting on this one, but that's fine. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with some, uh, oil paints and, um, I use my own, um, I just, I just take, uh, mineral spirits, uh, odorless mineral spirits. Um, let's see if I even have any of that. It's, it's just, it's just paint thinner, you know, and then I use oil paints and then I mix up like a diluted kind of solution, uh, to, you know, to rub on these guys because especially for like terrain stuff, you know, like I always say that, but it's like, you don't want to spend money on, on like, if you're, if it's like a gigantic thing like this and you're going to have a whole, a whole bunch of it, you know, you don't want to spend you don't want to use the good stuff, you know? Um, so this is just, uh, it's just like diluted oil paint. And then, you know, I come in and then just kind of brush it on, put it all over. And then um, it's gonna sort of bring out those, um, those details, kind of like the, uh, the little spots where, um, just like details on the of the sculpt and stuff kind of make it pop out but also um you know if you're like if you're like holding it like this it does that natural thing where the um it, it gravity you know <laughs> gravity that natural thing gravity comes down this way and kind of collects and then it gives it this interest interesting look right so um what you can do is you can let it get dry and then uh, like take a, a paper towel or something or you know a brush and then come in with some mineral spirits and then kind of clean it up or what you can also do is just while it's you know while it's wet just kind of dab it off the places where you don't want it like off of the you know raised surfaces and stuff anything that you want to be like shiny and glossy, you know, like shiny metal, stuff like that. You can just, just sort of dab it off on that spot and that does the trick. Um, but you know, it does, it does create like a really cool, interesting, dirty, grimy, you know, lived in uh, look. And then the, uh, I kind of want to go for that because I want these to look like it, it's inside of like a spaceship or something. So I don't want it to look like super oxidized rust. Um, I just want it to look dirty, dirty and used and lived in. So yeah, just kind of put a little bit of the, a little bit more of this stuff on and then yeah, take it off the raised edges. You can kind of see how that looks, but definitely a cool look. So, uh, so yeah, I'm going to let these, uh, dry a little bit and then I'll, um, I'll, I'll put up some good pictures that show what they look like when um, when things are dry. <laughs> 